this is my snowblower. It's um, one of the largest walk-behind units that Honda makes, and it's been a great snowblower, but it, it's kind of got me thinking about something. Right next door to it here is one of my old two jalopy tractors with its snowblower. We're right in the middle of snow blowing season right now. And these two machines side by side kind of illustrate two different philosophies of machinery uh, use, I guess you could say. Uh, I bought this Honda snowblower new. And the interesting thing is it costs the same amount of money as this entire loader tractor with snowblower that you see in front of it. Uh, the tractor is from the late 70s sometime. Uh, the snowblower was pretty much dead and growing moss in the forest. Uh, the tractor didn't have chains on it when I got it, so it was more or less useless in the wintertime. But these two machines side by side show up um, how much more machinery you can get for your dollar if you're willing to do a little tinkering. And I'll show you a few of the tinkering things that I've done on this on this old girl. The Honda snowblower has been completely trouble free. You pull the cord and it works and um, the, the tractor has needed some TLC. But when you consider the time it takes to apply that TLC and, and what you get out of it, I think it's a pretty good deal. So I'll just show you a few things I've done with this old tractor. And When I first got the tractor, there was a couple of, kind of minor things wrong with it. One was the exhaust system down here. Uh, it ended right after the muffler. And as you can see, that's right below the seat. So it might make for a, a pretty fumy ride. It was actually made worse by the fact that uh, this pipe here had a split in it. Uh, the pipe was sound uh, on both halves where they met. There was just this gap. Uh, so I put on this, this muffler clamp with some high temperature silicone. And I also um, added this long exhaust pipe to get the exhaust out behind the tractor where it belongs and you can see a chain there holding up the exhaust as well it's worked perfectly ever since I did that it took about well, maybe a couple of hours at the most to get that job done the only other issue I had down here uh, that silver thing is the top part of the starter motor I had to change that recently I did a short video on how I made that happen. I had to bore a, a hole in the side of the frame in order to get to one bolt that was pretty much impossible to get any other way, at least with the tools that I had. So those two things uh, got the tractor running reliably. Uh, when I say reliably, I don't mean reliably enough that I'd want to use a tractor like this to feed a hundred head of cattle all winter or something because Take a look here. Um, you can see these hydraulic lines. They're getting kind of worn and they're going to, they could let go at any time. Uh, this tractor is plenty reliable for what I need it for. And it just illustrates how much machine you can get for how little money when you commit to putting some work into it. I'm not a mechanic, just a backyard guy with some tools. So, if I can do this, I think most anyone can. Most um, of the work I had to put in was with the snowblower. It was pretty ancient. It had some moss growing on it. It was, was really seized up. This whole chute business, where the snow gets blown out, it was seized on quite well to its base. There was no chance that it would swivel. But it did have the remains of the old swiveling mechanism, which was this arm here it swivels up at that end it had the remains of a cable which wraps around the chute and fastens to each end of this arm that was all rotted off so I took the chute off lubed it up ground it down a little bit where it swivels and slides and turns on the base and 
added a new cable, and got a hydraulic cylinder too. This allows me to control the direction of the chute from the seat of the tractor. There's a, a lever there. And so in addition to the cylinder, I needed to get these hydraulic hoses and they can connect up front where any accessory might go. So that got most of the blower going. It didn't have a power takeoff shaft, so I had to buy one of those. That was about $300 or so. That's the most I've spent for any one given part on this tracker. I got the kind with a, a, a breakaway feature here. These two halves of the yoke, uh, this part of the yoke are held together just with this bolt and it's not very hard so that if I hit a rock or something that's supposed to be the first place that breaks. Another couple of things here on the on the blower. Shortly after I started using it the drive chain broke. That's this this chain here. It runs the auger which moves the snow into the towards the center of the blower where that fan spins around or actually spins this way and shoots the snow up and out of the chute. So drive chain replacement. About three or four blowings into the season last year, this bearing completely disintegrated. So I had to take this cover off. It's a pretty easy fix because this, this cover as holder secures the bearing that's inside. So it was easy to get to and um, all in all, that's kind of the story. That's an illustration of the fact that you can get a lot of machine for a little bit of money if you're willing to apply some, some TLC. And that's what this old, ugly, but very useful tractor is all about.